Hello and welcome to our weekly Parsha Share with the commentary in the, of the al although this week uh, it's not the commentary of the al Um There are two reasons for this. The main reason is that sadly my mother-in-law, my, my wife's uh, mother, uh, passed away yesterday, um, uh, late last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, and the Levi is going to be tomorrow in California. Uh, so everything, as you can probably guess, is more than a little bit hectic. And the second reason, so uh, the al um I'm afraid we will not be looking at the al this week. Instead, um, somebody I knew as a young young man who's now a rabbi, uh, mentioned in a shir, which I, which I uh, overheard, he mentioned a sefer called the Bas Ayin. And the Bas Ayin was a sefer I'd never come across before. Um, when I discovered <clears throat> what the, exactly the Bas Ayin is, here's the sefer Bas Ayin, it's in two volumes. Um, then uh, I discovered it was by the Rebbe of Avrish, who was one of the early Rebbe's of the Baal Shem Tov, one of the, from the Chernobyl dynasty. And he was the first Chassidish Rebbe who, who settled in Eretz Yisrael, Talmud of the Baal Shem Tov, and he settled in Sfas. Um, un- undoubtedly uh, a remarkable person. I've got lots of Hasidic stories to tell you about Hasidish, the Hasidic Rebbe called the Rebbe of Avrish. However, as it's got to be a little bit short tonight, I hope you forgive me, and I just want to jump straight in uh, to this week's Pasha, which is the story of Bollock. Uh, it is problematic, um, to put it mildly. Um, the big question really is, as Bollock is the exact opposite, is the anti Avram Avinu. As it says in Pekiobus, all the qualities, the three main qualities of Avram Avinu, uh, he had them in negative form, the opposites of them. And yet he's a prophet. When it says, that nobody was as great as Moshe, the rabbis take that to mean that's the same biggest throne amongst the Jewish people, there was nobody as great as Moshe. But the implication is there was somebody as great as Moshe in the non, non-Jewish world and non-Jewish peoples, and that was somebody called Bilam. So Bolak is confronted by a Jewish army on his borders, and he goes to ask Bilam to go and curse the Jewish people. Initially, he doesn't want to do this. Um, and the reason he doesn't want to do it is because the people they send, the emissaries that Bolok, the king of Moab, sends, um, are not up to the standard that he would consider himself worthy of being uh, 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 summoned by. And therefore he simply rejects. And Hashem says, fair enough. But then hearing that rejection, the king uh, Bolok sends to Bilam many more, far a greater number of emissaries. And when Hashem sees this, he says, fine. Oh, okay, you can go. They're um, choshev. They are prestigious enough for you to go with them. Now, this is obviously extraordinarily problematic. Um, Hashem hates ego. We'll see in this uh, in a, a second, in the words of the Basayim, um, Kabbalistic giant, uh, we'll see exactly that Hashem detests ego. It, when the Rambam, the Ramban, who was the greatest, people think of the original, um, however, the greatest Kabbalist uh, uh, that we know before we go into very far back is the Ramban. And the Ramban, this famous letter to his son, and those who are with me weekly, um, they uh, will know that uh, I've got a custom after I make up dollars to read the letter of the Ramban to his son, the Ramban to his son, every month of Shabbos. And in it, he says, he, he emphasizes to be an honor, to be a humble person, um, that that is the, the key to opening connection to God and every, everything that you could possibly want. Oh, I should have mentioned, of course, that the shear is dedicated to the, the Aliyah of the Neshama of my late mother-in-law, who's called Sima Esther Basisro. Um, so Sima ba- Esther Basisro should, uh, her Neshama should, should have Nachas from the shear and uh, an Aliyah in Shema. Back to this. So basically, um, humility is, as we'll see in a second, extraordinarily important. And yet, Abraham had humility. Bilam, the anti of Rome, uh, had none. He was a, a tremendous, tremendous egotist. So, how is it that God speaks to such a person? And why does he say to him, No, you can't go and curse the Jewish people? And then somebody says, well, Okay, you can go. What I put in your mouth, well, I tell you to say, it. that's what you're going to say. But you can go. Why is there a change? 
So I think, uh, I hope nobody's as excited by what the, uh, the Revy of Arish has to say in this as, as I am. Um, and let me show you the right page. Here we go. So he says the following thing. Oh, I know a lot of beer. So I'm jumping into the middle of something, but this is so wonderfully fabulous. I'm so excited to find a, a really superb new safer to uh, dip into and hopefully answer all sorts of questions that might pop into my head um, in the years to come. Um, he says, Oh, no, about Labir. I want to explain something else. Lama Shomansa, but Chila Omar, a Kodj Baruchu, Labilam. Why was it at the beginning that a Kodj Baruchu said to Bilam, Lo Selachim Ehem, Emohem, don't go with them? And Possek, you'd base in the, the beginning of Parshas Bolak. But Akakak, Kesholach Bolak, Sorim Rabim, Nechbodin, Meela, but when a much larger delegation, a much larger embassy is sent from the king, um, of far more prestigious ambassadors, and then Hashem says, it's okay, you can go. Um, good. Im kum if these people have come to summon you, with those guys you can go. They're prestigious enough. Uh, I thought Hashem detests, detests uh, uh, people who are egotistic. Why would Hashem change his mind about this? Good question. Achnira, this is great stuff. Achnira, the ini rots in the bara who show bilam gam kin yivorach es israel amoy. Hashem does want bilam to go, and he does want bilam to be the conduit through which he's going to bless the Jewish people. I see, and it's a shorter share. I'll be able to go into more length. Uh, how the fact that all the blessings they actually gave us didn't actually sustain themselves, didn't actually maintain themselves. But still, Hashem wants a, 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 him to bless us. Um, and of course, the words of his blessing are in, in the, enshrined in our davening. How great are you, your tents, uh, Israel, your dwelling places, which, says Rashi, is a hint to the fact that the, the, the structure of the, the tents or the, the sukkahs, the little huts, whatever it was that they lived in in the desert, were designed so that nobody's windows looked into somebody else's house. I saw that, and there's a salute there to the fact that the Jewish people are private, are sneistic people, and respect privacy, and certainly would want to see anything inappropriate and invade somebody else's privacy. And so there's, he wants him to utter these words and give these blessings, but we've got a problem. It's him. So the solution is going to be, and this is so clever, to stop him being him. And how's he going to do that? Then, well, he does that, Hashem does that by simply agreeing with, with, B, with Bilam's rejection of the first group of ambassadors to come to get him. But in the second embassy, the second group of ambassadors, more numerous and more important, then he says yes. And that was our problem. But why does Hashem say yes? Listen to this. It's because he wants them to bless the Jewish people. Now, Listen to this. He wants Bilam to utter these blessings. Uh, as you find in the Pesukim, he does bless the Jewish people. It was part of God's plan. But he, did, he wants that the blessings that he gives will not be permanent. Again, that's uh, for all sorts of reasons we were not able to come into them. The reason he doesn't want his blessings to last, to be, it's, in other words, it's going to be a temporary um, positive uh, change, which will have a positive impact on the Jewish people. But it, it, because he's so imbued with negative forces, then as it were, uh, it would, there's no way it can be a, a proper, a perpetual um, uh, a blessing for, for Cloud Throne. He's got an iron raw. He, he's, he's jealous of people, but nefesh rechova, ruach gavoya, and he's, and as the, the, the critical one is, he's, a, he's an egotist. Now, if that's his basic nature, if you talk about a person who is basically intrinsically in his DNA, or rather, that's the wrong word, in his choices, who has made himself through his choices, who could have been great, but a very bad person, we don't want his blessings. But however, what if Hashem changes him and or changes his basic nature? And how does he do that? When he has busha, 
when he's embarrassed in front of the emissaries sent by the King of Bullock, then at that just split second at that moment, for a short time, there's a change in who and what he is. And what is that? Busha. He is embarrassed. And why is he embarrassed? So there's lots to say about that. Um, the, when he's embarrassed, he's, he's embarrassed when this donkey, if you remember the donkey, he's going along the road to the donkey, there's an angel standing over the, and drawing the sword, which the donkey sees and Bilam doesn't see. Now, I can't resist telling you what Rashi says here. If it had Rashi, of course, it would be extraordinarily good. Um, and Rashi says, oh, I can just... Hmm. Rashi says, I can't find it. Oh, he, he says, the reason why is that the donkey could see the angel, but Bilam couldn't. This is in Posse Kov Gimel, says Rashi. But Ritzira Osen, the, the, the donkey saw, but who key raw, Shanasa the Kodesh Baruch of Shus Lebehema, Leroy's Yasemina Odom. Because in a certain respect, Hashem gives an animal the ability to see things which are denied to a human being. Why? He says, because Shmitoshi Yish Bo Das, Titorif, because an animal's intellect is obviously extraordinarily limited. Apparently, some dogs can master a vocabulary of up to 200 words, but that's sort of like the Einstein of dogs. Uh, the vocabulary, the, the, the intellectual ability of a dog is very, very limited, and that's a very intelligent animal, and other animals are too. Now, apparently, there are spirits. There are people who have died. There are spiritual beings around us all the time. We, fortunately, do not see them. Uh, if you were in bed tonight and you woke up in the middle of the night and your great grandma was, was standing there waving at you, uh, I think you would, uh, mm. might quite soon join her. Ah, just couldn't take it. But animals do see things. And there's lots of uh, um, evidence for that. For them seem to be aware of things that we are unaware of because it won't disturb them. Seeing a dead body, seeing a ghost, will not disturb them, but will disturb us. That's Rashi's reason for uh, why the, the donkey was able to see but of course, the miracle is that a donkey then opens his mouth and starts a debate with Bilam, who's hit it for not going forward when it should, and gone over to the side, swerved out of the way to get away from this, this angel. Eventually, of course, the, the, the uh, uh, Hashem opens Bilam's eyes, he sees the angel, and he realizes where he's gone wrong. But in the dialogue between Bilam and the angel, there is something which makes, and you've got, I suppose we've got to set the scene here. Here is uh, Bollock's secret weapon. Why did he send for Benam? Because they know that the leader of the Jewish people, his power comes from his mouth. In other words, his prayers, his, able, his ability to talk to God. He needed somebody who would be able, who had the same abilities, only in, as it were, in a negative sense. And of course, that's going to be Benam. So that's why he, he looks for this. He, here is our, our salvation, our secret weapon that he will be able to get to the core of the power of the Jewish people and counter it because he's a master. Well, there's nobody as great in the Jewish people as Moshe, but in the non-Jewish world, there's certainly not. And that's going to be Bilam. But imagine, and of course, and he's a, got an ego, so he's rejected. Anyway, the first emissary is be begone. Serfs, peasants. Um, but when very important people come, yes, oh, no, okay, no, no, I'll go, no, I'll go with you. But imagine the reaction of what happens. I'll read to you, because what Rashi says here, he says, Eginus dova ze hasorin. When the whole incident with the donkey takes place, and Bilan can't get the donkey to do what it wants to do, what he wants to do, he says to him, to the donkey, uh, if I, uh, is, is it, the donkey says, why are you hit me with a stick? If I had a sword, I'd chop up your head. So here, here's, listen to the Rashi. uma shulima he, this great secret weapon of ours, is going to come and curse this blessed people, the spiritual people, this Am Hanifker, the chosen people of, of Hashem Izborach, with his mouth. But he's, he's saying he needs to have a sword against a donkey. It rather undermines his status of being the fellow who can see these magic words that they're anticipating. They were looking for somebody who can counter Moshe's words, Moshe's mouth, with uh, uh, deadly words of his own, but he can't. He, can't. he needs a. He's, he's threatening a sword and a donkey. 
And so his status, why didn't he say something like, you know, pokusy pokusy word and, and kill the donkey? Uh, so his whole being is undermined. His whole prestige is undermined. Now that's the important thing. Because when a person is put to shame in public, and incidentally, it's one of the most deadly things, most terrible things that can happen to a person is to be embarrassed or rather to be embarrassed by someone else in public. Then at that point, what happens? Then his whole sense or her whole sense of being shrinks into nothingness. My I, my, my, my individuality, my I as an individual, I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed. And then it just, swoop, ah, but then my eye is taken away. My eye is taken away. And as a consequence of my eye being taken away, the barrier that separates me from God is removed. That ego, now that he has been embarrassed, that ego that so defines him has been reduced. And now, at that point, he is able to see something which he would not be able to see before because that barrier created by his ego or by his sense of eye has gone. Uh, but it would definitely be necessary in order to diminish that sufficiently to, as it were, let, let the, the, the spiritual uh, part of him shine through and see through. It would need to be that the first group would have to be rejected. You need far more prestigious people whom he's going to be embarrassed in front of. Just, you know, servants, schmata guys. Mm. Okay, so they see him making, the, making uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to see, being in shul, tried to blow a shifer in public. Or seen somebody do it I happened to me a few years ago in front of about 600 people at gateways here in America and uh, I've blown the shuffle many times and suddenly <laughs> nothing and the more you blow the more you get into a mess and nothing and I just right you feel absolutely awful in front of 600 people um well same sort of thing here Hashem engineers it's not just a few people but it's, it's a lot of people they're great people and so his embarrassment is enormous his sense of eyes and therefore he's able to see Essentially, when he's able to see the, the, the angel, that is a hint of the greatness, as we said before, of humility and the, the, the enormity of the sin of, uh, of, of ego and why and how it distorts so much. With regards to Moshe Rabbeinu, as I said, oh, nobody was as great as Moshe Rabbeinu, but what was his outstanding character trait? And of course, the answer was humility. Because humility, and nobody was as great, nobody was as humble as Moshe Rabbeinu, and the Talmud contrasts uh, the humility of, of Avram to Moshe Rabbeinu. Avram was incredibly humble, but didn't reach the level yet of Moshe Rabbeinu. And an astonishing thing is that when it comes to the the um, uh, the posuk which says Kol bas Panima, the whole honor of the daughter of the king is Panima. She is quiet. She is private. She's a private person. We would say a humble person. Um, who is this daughter of the king? The astonishing thing is the commentators say and that posuk called Kavuda Bas Melapanima is talking about Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, hold on a minute. The daughter of the king? If it's talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, couldn't you find a posuk that said the son of the king? Why is it the daughter of the king? And the answer is really quite simple. When Moshe Rabbeinu is on the highest spiritual level, he's effectively acting, occupying the role, which is a female role. My Chavrissa told me today a, a remarkable thing. He's a huge fan of um, Rosham Shunafal Hirsch. And Rosham Shunafal Hirsch, I've got to keep my glasses a little messed up, um, in his a commentary in Bracious, says a very intriguing idea, and it's, it's brilliant. He says that when Hashem creates the world, then he creates, um, as it were, more basic uh, elements first. And then in throughout creation, he moves on to things which are more perhaps you could say sophisticated. So first of all, he creates the basic elements, you know, the, 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 the structure of the sphere, um, air, water, etc., fire, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, then he pops, uh, that, so that's the inanimate. From the an, inanimate, then of course, he, call, he causes greenery to grow. So then we get herbs and, and, and grass and so on and so forth. And then eventually animals. And what comes at the end of that process? A human being. So you see there's a there's a progression going up and up and up. But what sort of human being did he create first? It was a man. But that wasn't the end of the process. Then it was a woman. 
But if it's going up and up and up, then a woman is naturally on a higher level than a man, something we discussed before in my, my book, A Truly Great Jewish Woman, then and now deals with in great detail. The reason that, that Sarah was a greater prophetess than Avram Avina was a prophet was simply because she was a woman. Women innately have a lesser sense of I, of ego, than do men. <clears throat> uh, men are not very good at letting go of their ego. Women are far better at it. It doesn't mean to say women are perfect. It doesn't mean to say there's not individual women who have got, you know, humongous egos and did terrible things in histor through history. That's not the point. The general state of femaleness is to have less ego than, than maleness. And as a consequence, therefore, they're on a higher spiritual level. So that's why Moshe, on the highest spiritual level, is, is expressed, his identity is expressed, as it were, spiritually, psychologically, as a... As a, as a woman, as, as, a, as opposed to a man. Here, as it were, he has to be moved into a female type perspective in order to be able to see the highest spiritual levels. It's a, it's a beautiful idea. And I get very, very excited about that. Um, so therefore, that's why I made sure that it had to be a, a much greater and more prestigious uh, entourage to accompany um, Bilam to this, uh, to this meeting with the King of Bolo, and not to flatter or to encourage his ego but rather to diminish it and so he could see things there's an important lesson there and keeping with that theme <clears throat> let me tell you an interesting story i was once at a um a uh it was a, a bar mitzvah and at the bar mitzvah there was somebody who was asked to speak um and the, the, this was a, a rabbi of the the young man the young man's father was about shuba and uh, the rabbi had been played a critical role in, in the fellow's um, journey to Torah observance. And to, he actually stood up and said, had it not been for the next speaker, there would have been no bar mitzvah because I would have married a non-Jewish woman. So he played a critical role. It, the, the fellow whom I know told me that he'd been introduced to another rabbi of the boys from a later uh, iteration of his journey. Um, and for some reason, there was a coldness. He just smiled and said, Shalom Aleichem, the way you normally would. And for some reason, this rabbi did not greet him with any warmth, and he never met him in his life before. Anyway, he stood up and gave the, gave the Bar Mitzvah drasha, this friend of mine. And, uh, and when he gave this Bar Mitzvah drasha, he ended up with, I suppose it's a little bit cliched, but I'm sure he meant it sincerely when he said to the Bar Mitzvah boy, I'm absolutely convinced that uh, coming from the family, you come from being the person you are and having heard so many nice and important and great things about you that in a very short space of time, you're going to go on to become an accomplished town of Chochem. You're going to be somebody with a, build a tremendous reputation um, in, uh, in the Jewish people. Incidentally, this young man got married about two months ago uh, and I was at the wedding and he did go on to do that. Anyway, that was my friend and he sat down. And then the other rabbi was introduced and he stood up and then he said, not being blessed with the abilities to look into the future and Ruach HaKadosh, I won't make any predictions about what's going to happen to you after your bar mitzvah, which was clearly a direct attack for some weird reason on this friend of mine who had spoken first. And everybody knew that it was. Um, and, and the rabbi of the, this particular synagogue was an, an old fellow, a huge time of looked at my friend and I noticed in his eyes, just a split second, was just, the eyebrow just give a little flicker, just a little look of concern. My friend simply put down his head. And that was the end of the story. Um, anyway, the, the other rabbi did come up and apologize afterwards and, 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 and tried to claim that he didn't mean what obviously he did, but okay. But the interesting thing was that this friend of mine, his wife came rushing up and I overheard the conversation. And he said, there's a couple here who have a, 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 a just, um, had a problem with uh, conceiving a child. Did you tell anybody what he, have you, have you spoken to anybody what that fellow just said to this fellow, to, to this friend of mine? And he said, no. And I heard him say, it was all very quiet. Quick, come over and give them a brocha. Apparently, if you are embarrassed in public, well, what did we just say? Your sense of I shrinks. But in, it's a bit artificial, which have been a sense of I, he, he shrunk himself. But if somebody attacks you in public and you don't fight back, then your, your sense of I is shrunken for you. 
And at that moment, then a blessing that you get from somebody who's just been embarrassed and hasn't uh, fought back, has accepted the embarrassment, that's a bracha well worth getting. It's a, it's a fabulous idea. So it, it really sort of illustrates this point here. The Elam with his, his sense of eye shrunk, then the spiritual eye, now the eye, E-Y-E, yeah, uh, or eyes, could see something which you've not been able to see before because the quintessential Jewish media, according to the quintessential Jewish character trait, according to the Ramban, is humility. So that was the first thing I saw in a safer called the Bas Ayan. But there's more, and it's so fabulous. I'm going to turn to, you know, to uh, towards the end of the his, uh, commentary in Bullock, and let me read this to you. And this is so absolutely fabulous. It's uh, tremendous. Um, and because time is rushing out, I don't think I'll go into the whole thing. Um, but when in Matoiva Oleko Yaakov, when that is said, when that, that famous uh, a blessing is um, given, uh, here I've got my little uh, Chumash. So here it says, How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, or your dwelling places, O Israel. We all know that bit. Stretching out like brooks, like gardens by a river, like aloes planted by Hashem, like cedars by the water. And of course, there's millions of deeper meanings behind these words because it was prophecy emanating from God. But the next thing is very important, Posit Zion. Yizal Mayim Midolov. Water will flow from your wells. Bazaroi um, Mayim Rabim, and there will be seed by the abundant waters. So I suppose that thing will grow. But Yura Me Agag Malkai, and your king will grow higher than Agag, who was a king and a giant. But he's not a and your, 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 your king will, his, his rulership will. will well, uh, go on forever sort of thing. Fantastic. Now, let's go look at these Hebrew words again, because it's very important. It says, Yizal Mayim Midolov. The Lord Yizal is the same word as Mazel. Mazel Yizal. It means to flow. The idea of Mazel is positive forces coming from Shemayim to this world. Well, that's your Mazel. That's the same word. Mayim Midolov from, now, Dolov does mean um, uh, a well, but the word Dal it means somebody who is broken, a broken spirit, perhaps, a, a poor person, uh, and certainly there's a, a there's a hint there to a humble person as well. So let me read to you what the Bar Science says in that, and you'll see how beautifully it uh, it fit, it fits with what he previously said. And again, there's a fabulous idea. So he quotes the Potsuk, um, and then he says the following thing: you do you should know what the rabbis say, famously in the Gemara Pesachim. It's, uh, it's in Samach uh, Vavon, the base. Kolam is goya achochum. Anybody becomes a bit of a megalomaniac, a bit of an e, in, in love with himself or herself. Im chochum hu chochmosim is talekas amen. If he's done with chochum, his wisdom will flee from him. He may have known Shas and all the books behind me here, but he'll lose it because he's grown an ego. Perusha shachchina is talekas amen. What that means is, that the skin of the presence of God will depart from them, so that's why his wisdom will go. As it says in the Gemara, Saitan, Hashem apparently says, there's two, there's only one person I cannot coexist with or cannot coexist with me in my world, and that is a, is a Val Gaiva. Um, and again, something Ramban says in his letters to his son, he, he develops this idea. That if you're a Balgaiva, something Hashem's got no time for you whatsoever. Because the, the main, the key to unlocking connection to God, same idea as we saw before, is to get rid of ego and to nurture humility. And of course, the thing that's going to bring you uh, to or reinforce your humility is when you take one yourself. Uh, Torah, Mount Sinai, or in your own Mount Sinai, or our own Mount Sinai, when we accept Torah upon ourselves. Um, that will leave Nishbar of Anitkali El Kimlos Veze, and the more that you know, you, 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 or life perhaps uh, contracts your sense of eye, the more you come closer to God. And then he quotes the Baal Shem Tov. And so the Gomorrah says in Shabbos and Kufnun Vol Vol Aleph. Kuftim Vavon Aleph is a very famous Gemara in which the Gemara is talking about at great length uh, whether or not the Jewish people are affected by Mazel. Whether Yesh Mazel Yisrael, whether the Jewish people 
have Mazel affecting them or in Mazel Israel. The Jewish people are not affected by Mazel. And the Mazolas, without I say going, spending a lot of time, too much time on this, Mazolas are the energies that flow from other planetary bodies to this world, which does affect things in this world. Leaving aside Judaism, uh, then we know, of course, the tides are, are uh, affected and controlled by the movements of the moon, the gravitational pull of the moon. But there are many other things that obviously happen in this world as a, as a consequence of other planetary forces reaching it and affecting change or patterns within this world. Right. Does that affect the Jewish people? Are we affected by Mazel or not? And the Gemara says, well, it depends. If a Jewish person uh, does mitzvahs, then it's a bit like the Iron Dome, Israel's Iron Dome, to keep out uh, terrorist missiles being formed fired from Gaza or, or wherever. Uh, these um, uh, uh, mitzvahs that you do, as it were, are the counter forces that fire up to intercept any negative thing that might be coming your way. So as long as you do that, that's what the Gemara says. But the Baal Shem Tov says something which is br brilliant and, and, uh, and expanded on by the Basayan. And the Gemara says, in Mazel Yisrael, in Mazel Yisrael, the Jewish people are not affected by Mazel. He translates it differently. Ein is also the word for nothing or nothingness. Ein, Mazel Yisrael. So therefore you translate it as, if you have a sense of nothingness about yourself, a sense of humility about yourself, that's the Mazel Yisrael. So not in Mazel Yisrael, there is no Mazel to Yisrael, there is a Mazel to Yisrael. And what is that? The Mazel Yisrael is Ein. When a person considers themselves to be nothing, like Moshe Rabbeinu considered consider himself to be nothing. When the Jewish people have that perspective, the opposite of, as the Torah complains, yodi, I did this myself, I can do everything. Then when your perspective is ayin, nothing, not perish, ayin, if you've got this idea of ayin, bechinis anova, humility, who ha mazel Israel, that is the mazel of Israel. Yes, there is a mazel of Israel. What's the mazel? Ayin, as long as we feel ourselves to be nothing. When the Jewish people have that perspective about themselves, the chinus and of humility, as oisa the chinus ayin who hamezal and mamshiv mashpia al Yisrael kol tuv shefa bracha l'chaim, and everything comes from that. That unlocks the uh, humility, unlocks all the blessings of heaven. It stops as we are now in a few days or on Sunday, on mission after Shabbos, in the middle of the three weeks, and we recall, of course, Jews hating each other, Jew, other Jews. Eating each or Jews eating each other. Um, if only Jews were humble and humility and didn't want to control and power, then the whole thing would not have, would not have happened. I think there's some important messages there. Certainly for me, um, humility is the ideal Jewish uh, building building block and stepping stone to all other meters, as the Ramban says. Uh, we see examples of it beautifully. And, and, be, and be able to have, to have his ego shrunk to be able to see things, but it applies to us as well. The more you can shrink your ego, you take away that barrier, your, your sense of eye that separates you from Hashem, lets Hashem into your life, and all sorts of brokers comes as a consequence. I hope you enjoyed that little diversion from our uh, usually uh, share with the Alshach. They both did live in Svas, although with hundreds of years between them, but I kind of feel that the Alshach will understand that I'm a bit pushed for time because of the sad loss of my mother-in-law, and I rather suspect that he would uh, have uh, approved of the safer Basayan. I wish you all a good Shabbos. I look forward to seeing you um, back to our normal uh, Alshach next Thursday night.